views and opinions expressed on this public access programming do not necessarily represent those of the HUI Media family of radio stations. It's time for Sunday morning public access programming on this HUI Media radio station. Good Sunday morning to you. This is Johnny Mero. Time once again for our HUI Media public access programming here on our six Oahu radio stations. 101.1 FM, 101.5 FM, 107.5 FM, 103.9 FM, 97.1 FM, and 96.7 FM. Once again, we are joined by a member of Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, and this would be the policy director, Malia Hill. Good morning to you, Malia. Good morning. Well, we have a, a topic that's uh, got a, little, a lot of folks rattled out there. They're looking at what they possibly will owe for property taxes, and they're, they're getting a little worried. Everything is uh, much more expensive these days, so the possibility of the property tax in Honolulu going up. Now, Ke'ili'i Akina, Ke'ili'i Akina, president of the Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, recently wrote a column about the property tax situation on Oahu and statewide also. He said uh, they went up for 2023, which means property taxes might be going up, and that has a lot of people upset, as I just mentioned. Could you give the listeners a little more background on that? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, we talk about property taxes, and, you know, there's really two sort of halves to that. So there's the tax rate, um, which you'll hear is relatively low in Hawaii compared to other states, which is true, but that's also only half of it because we also have extremely high property values, and that really affects how much you pay. So you take those two, low tax rate, really high tax property value, and what you end up is Hawaii residents pay really more in the middle. So, you know, don't be fooled by people saying, you know, property taxes are really low. We have the lowest tax rate. Yeah, but you still pay a lot in taxes because of the high property values. And that kind of gets to the heart of the problem, because when we say that the property taxes are going up this year, we're not saying that they increase tax rates. They haven't. But we're saying that how much people are going to be billed, how much they will actually have to pay is going to go up because those property values have gone up a lot. You know, that's not unusual. This is Hawaii. Property is expensive. But the property tax assessments, the amount that the county determines your know, property is worth, have been really, really high this year. Um, for example, on Oahu, assessments went up by an average of 12.4% compared to the last year. And that's just on average. East Honolulu only went up by about 10.1%, but North Shore, they went up by an average of 20.4% and residential A properties, which is a whole other category of problem, um, that went up 39.9%. So even though no one hiked your tax rate, people are still going to see bigger tax bills. And that's just something a lot of people can't afford. I'm not just talking about, you know, a lot of the focus, you know, they can't afford. We talk about, you know, people on fixed incomes, um, people who are really struggling. And yes, you know, obviously it's going to be really, really difficult for them. But this is enough that it really hits just across the board. You know, ordinary families just trying to make ends meet and deal with inflation, you know, they're going to be hit hard by this too. All right, Malia, we're not just talking about property owners. How will rising property taxes affect renters? You know, that's a good point, too, because it's, you know, we have this tendency to just think that this is about, you know, the actual people who own property. But, no, renters aren't immune from these these hikes in costs. You know, if you see a lot of the conversation about this, you'll see that, you know, some of the people who are calling out for property tax relief are actually local landlords who are basically trying to tell the county, that these huge increases in tax is going to give them no choice but to hike rent. They just can't absorb that higher cost, and they're going to have to pass some of that on to renters. So, you know, it's not just that people are going to see higher tax bills. Renters are probably going to see a hike in in their rent. Mm. Okay, for the layperson, can you explain a little bit about how the city decides how much each property is worth? Um, yes, uh, it is. I, to be honest, I find this a little bit uh, confusing myself. So, mm-hmm. to to put it simply, you know, the way that these assessments work is that you know the county looks at recent sales prices of similar housing units. Um, so, since housing prices have been going up because of inflation and materials costs, and interest rates, and buyers demand, and all those factors your assessment will increase based on, you know, the way that sales prices of homes in your area are going up. Um, 
every county reassesses their property annually. So the assessments are supposed to sort of keep track and stay with the current market. But, you know, if you've following Hawaii and aware of the housing crisis, and I honestly don't know anyone who isn't, it's it's a little bit frustrating because these property values, they go up partially because of the housing crisis. There's just not enough housing to meet demand. And, you know, the counties, they could embrace policies and zoning policies that would encourage housing growth and you know, they haven't really done that, you know, not out of malice. There's a bunch of factors to that, but there haven't been any really heavy, serious efforts to encourage a lot of housing growth. So, you know, from a certain point of view, the counties both contribute to and also benefit from this housing crisis in the terms of, you know, the additional revenues that they get from the property taxes. I'm not saying that this is, you know, a conspiracy or intentional or anything like that, but it is a little frustrating to watch. Mm. The policy director of Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, they can be found at grassrootinstitute.org. It's policy director, Malia Hill. Um, Does Honolulu offer any protection for homeowners against a big increase in property taxes? Um, There is some protection, some small protection. I wouldn't, you know, call it, you know, very serious insulation, but... um, Homo, Honolulu homeowners um, do have a relative lower tax rate, um, 0.35%, and they can apply for exemptions that lower the overall bill. Uh, for example, there's the homeowner's exemption um, in Honolulu that's $100,000. And so that means if you're a homeowner and you apply for this exemption and you're approved, you can deduct $100,000 from the assessed value of your property, and that's factors into how they calculate how much you have to pay in tax. So if you had a $1 million home and you get the exemption, you really only get taxed as if it's worth $900,000. There's also additional protections for Kapuna. Their exemption is larger than $100,000, depending on age. And there are other exemptions. Um, They can vary by county. And so it's really kind of worth looking at this list to see if you qualify for a homeowner's exemption or even other exemptions as well. Mm. Now, this property tax, is this exclusive to Hawaii? Does the Hawaii property tax work differently than other states? Yeah, Hawaii property tax is a little bit different. Um, For one thing, it's exclusive to the counties. So in Hawaii, only the counties can levy property taxes. In fact, it's actually in the Constitution. Uh, state government is prohibited from creating a state property tax or interfering with the county property taxes. Um, in addition, unlike the rest of the nation, Hawaii is the only state that pays for public schools through state taxes. Most of the rest of the nation, pretty much all everyone else, uses their property taxes to fund the schools. Uh, this is partially why uh, the property tax rate is technically low uh, because it's not it funds county services, but it's not required to pay for the entire school system. Um, but all of that is sort of mitigated by the fact that Hawaii has these really high property values, and they push up the actual bill for property taxes. So, you know, I guess it's like my little drum that I like to be like, don't let anyone tell you that you pay low property taxes. You do not. Pretty much in the average for the whole country. Mm. Malaya Hill from the uh, Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, grassrootinstitute.org. Got a lot of big thinkers over there. What are some of the reforms Grassroot is suggesting for Hawaii County Councils to address the likely increase in property taxes? What are you folks thinking about? Well, we have a couple different suggestions. And, you know, being the kind of organization we are, some of them are a little more long term. And you could even say maybe more optimistic, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, you know, more or less likely to be embraced by the different uh, councils. Um, Given the high property values in Hawaii, uh, we really think it's worth looking at just an across-the-board cut in the property tax rate just to offset these valuation increases. Admittedly, there doesn't seem to be a lot of support for just the idea of slashing the tax rates in general, especially at uh, Honolulu City Council. But objectively, that's the most certain definitive way to decrease taxes, especially if we think that these property values are just going to keep climbing. Um, Another thing uh, that might be more immediately embraced, and we've certainly seen some conversation about, is increasing the homeowner exemption. Um, As I mentioned before, that exemption is $100,000 for Honolulu, but they could raise it and raise it enough to offset these big assessments that we've seen this year. 
Uh, another thing they might want to do is amend that residential A classification. It's not very old. It's only been in place for a few years now, and it applies to all non-owner-occupied residential properties. Um, I think it would be better just to get rid of it altogether um, because it's the one that's those property taxes are going up substantially uh, based on these high valuations. But um, at a minimum, they shouldn't raise the threshold for it. The tier two threshold for this residential A classification is $1 million. And that is just much too close to what's really just the median Hawaii home price. You know, you can't sell people anymore on the idea that you're getting, you know, getting the just the rich or whatever with a $1 million home when we all know no, a $1 million home is sort of in the average range in Honolulu. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that could happen is that counties could put a cap on how much property tax revenue can increase in any given year. And this is putting the cap on how much the counties can take in. Um, so, for example, on Oahu, the average annual revenue increase over the past decade was 6.05%. So if we put a 5% cap on how much that could grow, then Oahu would just be, I mean, Honolulu would just be forbidden to collect more than that. And that the property owners would really see the results from that as well. Mm-hmm. Well, you you read about the frustration of uh, property owners in the, in the news, you, you letters to the editor, uh, you folks and other organizations uh, putting forth your ideas. Now, are city council members listening? What's the chance that they give some property tax relief this year? Well, you know, I think they are listening, in fairness. Um, The council had a hearing on property tax assessments just last week. Um, They're still finalizing the budget, so we haven't seen any real concrete, you know, here is the exact terms kind of proposals yet. But there have been some council members who have talked about increasing the homeowner's exemption. Um, Some have suggested expanding the low-income tax credit. Um, This is a credit where homeowners are exempted from taxes that exceed 3% of their income if they meet certain qualifications, and like receiving a homeowner's exemption, um, how much the tax owed has to be more than 3% of their income. Um, They cannot have a combined income of more than $60,000. They can only have one home, and they have to pay at least $300 in tax. If that was a little overwhelming, essentially what it means is if you have a couple making $60,000 a year and they have a house that's valued at $800,000 after the homeowner's exemption is applied, they would owe $2,800 in tax, but because 3% of their income is 1800 they would be protected from having to pay that extra 1000 That's over 3% of their income. So some people are saying, well, we should, we should broaden that. We should maybe make that a little, um, expand that a little bit. Um, one city official said they might look at a $100 tax rebate for what that's worth. <laughs> so mm-hmm. there is this discussion, there's this idea of reform in the air, but we just don't know what reform it will take and, you know, how how big it will be. Okay, I understand. Now we're talking Oahu exclusively right now, but what do property taxes look like on the neighbor islands? Are, are they also going up? Well, every county has a slightly different timeline for these assessments. So Maui and Hawaii Um, their assessments won't be sent out to property owners until March. So we won't really know what the situation is going to be like there until until a few months from now. Kauai sent out their assessments in December. Uh, We haven't seen a lot of news coverage of the property tax there like we have seen in Honolulu, but we have heard from people in Kauai that the assessments are up. Um, And every county has different exemptions and protections for lower-income homeowners. Um, For example, but Kauai and Hawaii counties, they both saw their property tax rental jump uh, last year, um, and it's reasonable to expect similar increases in property tax all the way through the state. But Kauai, for example, has some limits on how that works. Mm. Okay, now is there anything you think we here in Honolulu should borrow from one of the other counties when it comes to this? Um, speaking of Kauai, um, okay. Kauai has a low income tax credit that's calculated by area median income. So it automatically adjusts for inflation. Um, Whereas Honolulu is set at that $60,000 that we mentioned, and they can't change that unless the council changes it. So something like Kauai's, it's called a circuit breaker. It's basically a 
tax credit or deduction that relieves that burden on people for whom the tax would just be a big chunk of their income. Um, that would be helpful, adopting something like Kauai's standard there. All right, Malia. Is there anything else you would like to tell people who are worried about the rising property taxes? <laughs> Definitely. Um, for homeowners out there, if you're listening to this and you are just you know, concerned and worried, the thing I can tell you for absolute certain is apply for a homeowner's exemption. Because if you don't, you will have a higher tax bill. Um, and if your home is worth more than a million dollars, it will be even higher. You know, this homeowner's exemption I keep mentioning, it's not actually automatic. You have to apply for it every year, which means that, you know, some people just don't. They don't know about it, or maybe they just kind of miss it somehow. Um, and, you know, that's, that makes a big difference in that in what you end up paying in the end. Um, which I guess, you know, one the change that we could see that would be good would be some way to make this exemption automatic. That would be a good reform. I believe Boston has an automatic exemption system where they partner with uh, state tax authorities to use income tax returns to certify residency so that it sort of just all happens together and people don't have to reapply every year to get this exemption. And, you know, this in general, it's a really good reason to get involved or stay involved with politics at all levels, you know, from the county level all the way up. Because right now, the county councils are trying to figure out what they want to do about the property tax issue. And they're going to have people in their ears telling them that, you know, don't do too much. We need that revenue to expand local services or pay higher salaries, and so on and so on. And so if you're someone who believes, no, we need some kind of reform, we need protections against these big tax increases, you need to get out there and make yourself heard. Um, you know, we tend to get involved with these big issues at the national and state level when it comes to political stuff. But, you know, this is a reminder that you can advocate for change at every level, and it can make a difference, sometimes right there in your wallet. Can I ask you about the uh, the exemptions, the, the housing exemption, the, applying for that? How quick... Is that process, is that as slow as pretty much everything else seems to be? What do you know about that? I, feel, I, I, can't, I can't speak from personal experience okay. here. So um, I, I wish I could. Um, I, I would just say that it's it's important to stay on top of that. It, it's not, if you're asking, is it going to be like applying for a building permit? No, okay. no it's not going to be like that. But, you know, there is reason to just sort of be alert do it right away, pay, stay on top of it, and, you know, really do hope and advocate for an increase in this exemption um, if it's something you're concerned about. As policy director, Malia Hill, where can they find your work and everybody else at Grassroot Institute of Hawaii? Uh, well, you can find us at grassrootinstitute.org, or you can just Google Grassroot Institute of Hawaii, and you can find a lot more information about this there. It's um, a lot of good work being done by uh, my fellow grassroots staffers and a lot of more information and help. Well, we've been talking about the possible Honolulu property tax increases with Malia Hill, Policy Director, Grassroot Institute of Hawaii. Thanks so much. Have yourself a fantastic Sunday. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. The views. At-